Hello everyone. And I think it's a really key concept because, you know, over the years we've seen some really big trends start to form in this space. But I also think what's interesting is that there are these new trends that are forming where it's not only about going from paper to digital any longer, which I think is a, what a lot of organizations have been focusing a lot on in these last few years, but now I think organizations really need to focus on not just their digitization strategy, but taking that data and moving into this new intelligent world. Because the data that is coming out of each batch and being used in R&D, uh, when it's sitting there siloed, the level of value that you're getting out of it just isn't as expansive as if you start to think about a new way to unlock that data and use it to make better, more reliable, more uniform batches on a day-to-day -day basis. And so we're really excited to see that the industry is really coming around to this new way of thinking where it's not just, again, that paper to digital shift any longer, but organizations are making this, uh, this pivot to have intelligence in AI and ML as their core driving thesis for how they intend on modernizing and transforming their day-to-day -day operations. And so we've been around since 2014. Uh, this is now coming up where we've, this, we've deployed now, I think we're on 15 different countries, uh, four different continents all around the world now, and it's really exciting to see uh, the level of growth and adoption for this technology that has really started to come on within the last, let's say, two years. And the reason why we believe we're seeing this growth in the adoption level for this level of intelligence in, in manufacturing is because of the shift that's happening within the industry itself. You know, I think there are some really big trends that we're all seeing going from small molecule manufacturing, which is pretty well understood, generally speaking, uh, to much more robust and difficult biologics manufacturing, where the number of unit operations has almost tripled, the level of complexity and time that's associated with it, and the difficulty associated with actually getting that batch out the door per year has greatly increased as well. Uh, but not only that, though, we're also obviously starting to see this even more radical shift towards personalized medicine. And when you start to look at how organizations are actually going about their biomanufacturing, you know, there's the core technology that exists today really isn't keeping up with the shifts from what manufacturing was just predominantly a few years ago. And so what's really interesting, though, is that as the manufacturing starts to get more complex, the demands on the human workforce are only ever increasing. And so we're seeing high turnover, high aging workforces with demands placed on them to execute the first time, the right time, every time to make sure that, that batch is wholly reliable. And so it's a really big challenge, but the interesting thing that we see is that the kind of two ways to go about executing your batch right now from a software perspective is either using paper, which is still we're seeing huge amounts of paper throughout the industry, or a complex morass of systems that really isn't built to be flexible for modern manufacturing. Uh, and even more than that, though, we're seeing organizations using tools that, frankly, probably shouldn't be used for their batch processing on a day-to-day -day basis to actually ena enable and empower their manufacturing. And what ends up happening is that you get these big problems that exist within the industry, where the downtime associated between batch to batch is elongating. I would say it's always kind of been there, but there's really simple ways that this can be solved. And using paper or these really complicated systems and or inflexible systems exacerbates this problem, you know, tenfold. And in addition to that, you know, when you're using paper in particular and you have your GMP filing cabinet and you're going through and you're actually reviewing and approving each of these paper records, the batch record review process is incredibly long. And that release cycle before that batch gets out the door uh, is really a hindrance to getting more yield out of your organization on a yearly basis. Um, in addition to that, we're seeing through our customers that deviations are a common thorn in their side, and that's something that, you know, they can range in terms of what the complexity or, uh, let's say, severity of those deviations are, but we're seeing an average of about twice a week that these deviations come up, and a lot of them are attached to simple human-based deviations. Not all of them, of course, are associated with losing a batch, but there are things where humans go about going through their process and they make a mistake. 
And we believe that a lot of this is attached to the systems and the processes that they have available to them today to make that decision and ultimately try to execute and get that batch out the door. Um, and then there's another interesting fact that uh, I think w is best crystallized through a quote one of our customers said, that they want to be more scientist and less secretary. Because a huge portion of this industry is built around capturing data, transcribing what's going on, and building a robust audit trail for obvious reasons. But a huge amount of time is ended up wasting, which leads to data integrity issues, which leads to mistakes. And a lot of that is all associated, again, we believe, because of the tools that people have available to them today. And so what we did is we've built out what we call um, an augmented batch record system, uh, also our augmented procedure system, which I'll get into in a minute. But we really believe it's the next evolution of batch records in this space. And I'll get into that why. In addition to that, we have a whole suite of tools around global collaboration, because when you're actually executing in suite, you're not just executing as a single individual all the time when you're in your suite by yourself trying to ha fix a problem. You have to sometimes, or many times, collaborate with individuals that are not in suite and aren't gowned up. And so we built a whole suite around global collaboration to enable a way for organizations to better collaborate on a day-to-day -day basis. And then we're really, really big believers in hands-free. Uh, we believe it's the core driver and the core ergonomics that unlocks a lot of value in this space because you know, when you're wearing a full head-to-toe gown and you're interacting with equipment or raw material or consumable, you, know, you have to use new hands and it's pretty simple. And so we developed the whole system to work with AR-based smart glasses and other types of devices so that one can work really seamlessly and using their two hands in a very ergonomic and industry compliant way. And so diving in now, just starting off simple, which is talking a little bit about our global collaboration tool. Uh, this is where if you are say in suite and you have a problem, uh, you know, hey, you know, the, I have an issue with this piece of equipment, for whatever reason it's malfunctioning, and I want to collaborate with a vendor, a colleague, a subject matter expert somewhere else around the world because Whenever you have the problem, of course the SME is never in suite. You don't have the right person always there with you. And so we built out a tool to allow you to collaborate with that vendor, with that subject matter expert, no matter where they are in the world. And so you can wear these AR smart glasses and you can share your field of view so you can have two-way audio, two-way video, and you can collaborate really effectively as you're actually going through your process. Um, but what we see is really the value of this is pulling in more augmented reality tools to col collaborate and communicate in what we call a language independent way. Because a lot of the organizations here within the industry are fully global. You know, they're working with somebody in South America at the same time they're tech transferring to Europe and, you know, they have to move something to Asia. And so we built a lot of AR capabilities so that you can collaborate, troubleshoot, and train fully in a language independent way. So you don't even have to expa explain or speak what the problem is. You can guide an individual through the process and allow him or her to really understand, okay, how do we actually solve this problem? Of course, this drops down huge amounts of travel, huge amounts of complexity. And so it's something that we're seeing across the industry now that's being used quite effectively at our customers today. Um, but really where we see the future of this industry going and where the tech is the enabling factor in all of this is what we call our augmented batch records uh, module. And it all starts with a new methodology that we've developed where you take your existing content. You're not recreating it, you're not starting it from scratch, you're not creating new instructions from day one. You take those paper batch records that you have today and you augment them. You create these building blocks that sit on top of it. And so when you create those augmentations, you can then execute this across any of your different devices, whether it's head-worn, mobile, tablet, desktop, whatever it is, it's the form factor that makes the most sense for the people executing. And this allows them to then decide which device do they actually want to use that's ultimately most comfortable for them. And so then when they go through this process and they capture their data, all of that then is rolled up into a reporting suite so you can ultimately make a better, more informed decision going forward. And so to double down on that, we built out a whole suite of tools to allow you to take your existing content and augment it. And what we mean by that is we allow you to transform your process data, i.e. what to do, 
Uh, you can view technique demonstrations on how to do something. You can capture all of that data and do it across any device that you want. So if you want to use an AR headset and be hands-free, which we're big believers of, you can do that. You can sync that with your mobile device or your tablet or any other device so that if you want to use more something that you're familiar with in the beginning as you get up to speed, you can do that too. Um, or you can even use a desktop if you want. Uh, but the real crux of it is that you're able to do all of this as a team. You can execute across multiple people, multiple procedures, multiple processes, all as a team. And so once that team actually executes all of this, they can take all this data and put it into our centralized AI and ML database to start to build models on top of it. This is really where we see the future of this industry going and being able to capture a lot of your CPPs or a lot of your process data and then take what you're doing on a day-to-day -day batch level and start to make predictions on it. Because ultimately, if you're trying to solve your core problem, which is better, more reliable, more uniform batches, um, we believe that this is a system that will enable that core and get you there quickly. Because just to double down on it again, you know, it's not just the data itself, it's not just the methods in which you capture the data, but providing a seamless solution that you can bolt into your process today, leverage your existing content, execute across devices that you're comfortable with, and then ultimately use all that data that's captured to make a better, more informed decision. And so with that, uh, thank you guys very much. I hope you have an excellent ISPE. I'll see you guys around on the show floor. Uh, if you want to contact us, our website is uh, apprentice.io. You can also reach out to us on Twitter. And I'll be sticking around here after if you have any follow-up questions. But uh, with that, thank you very much for coming by. I really appreciate it. And Hope you guys got to learn something new. So thank you.